So, welcome to the Take 5 podcast, where we, where we will be discussing um, a film in each episode that we have um, viewed or of our own creation. And we will discuss other people's reactions and thoughts on this on films. My guest today is a um, fellow actor and writer and film creator and fellow YouTuber. It just so happens. Um, please welcome Matt Sale. H hello, Matt. Hey, guys. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> a pleasure. A pleasure is all mine. <laughs> um, so how are you coping in this in these um, very weird times? Well, needless to say, I'm uh, finding it unusual, but I am definitely hanging in there, just doing my best to keep busy and just trying to the trap of boredom, just trying to figure out ways to keep myself busy, occupied, and that's really keeping me going. So it's overall okay. Good to hear that you're doing well. Um, I myself haven't been that bad. But I've, I mean, I've been keeping busy. Right, I've been writing um, loads of films. Now, you are you being a fellow film creator. How many films have you created, um, including college or stuff that you've created on the side? Well, me personally, I have only just recently gone into the world of filmmaking i uh, haven't necessarily created the films myself but i have mainly acted in them um when i was roughly 12 i was in a uh, space film for a uh, national competition across the, the uh, uk the prize before he went up the international space station unfortunately that didn't happen but it was fun, needless to say, to create it. Uh, with a uh, film group that I uh, used to, to go to, I believe, they did some murder mystery films and stuff like that where I was a lead role. So all of that was really fun and a good day a filming. Um, and I just helped my friends with uh, making a World War One film with one of my with a group of my friends, so that was really a, a great experience. And now I've just been writing my own scripts for films I am planning to film as soon as lockdown is over and the all clear is given. That sounds pretty fancy. Um, I I can see that you've got a variety of very interesting posters. Um, do you want to take us through them? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have noticed that. Okay, so up to my right is uh, The Flash. The Flash is uh, one of my favourite uh, CW shows, so that I really enjoy. And then to, to my left... Yeah. <laughs> I do enjoy and, The Flash. Uh, yeah, who doesn't? And uh, to my left, we've got uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Future has to be one of my most all-time favourite trilogies of all time. Uh a poster of Groot from the second Guardians of the Galaxy film. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but left to it, uh, we have uh, Ready Player One. Ready Player nice. One is uh, definitely one of my favourite films, most favourite films in terms of usage mm -hmm. of CGI. And below them, we've got a Captain Marvel poster from when I went to see it in the <laughs> cinema. And next to it, because back in school, I was slightly nerdy, I, uh, Periodic Table poster nice um, um i mean all of them are um great films i'm not so keen on captain marvel though <laughs> might be controversial opinion i don't know but i how come? i'm i wasn't keen on on some of the um some of the acting mm. and stuff like that although ready player one i um, i love ready player one for all of the culture references and then i mean i still haven't seen back to the future that's on my list of many films to watch <laughs> you should so, definitely watch them at some point. Yes. Um, now, um, what else? What got you into YouTube, actually? That's an interesting question, I feel, to ask okay. myself. <laughs> so, really, when I first started thinking about YouTube 
and starting a YouTube channel. It was when it was during college and I was thinking of ways to one keep myself occupied so I have always got something to do uh, that's creative and uh, gets like the creative juices flowing in your head and just like thinking ways of doing things and stuff like that so just getting um, myself thinking about how I can do things and stuff like that in terms of making videos um, something also for something I could hopefully turn into a side hustle if I work on it long enough and get a big enough like subscribe account and following I can then start making some money on the side doing something that I enjoy and stuff like that and uh, yeah so a side hustle if you will uh, especially for during uni university as soon as university starts and I just thought it might be uh, something like really fun to do because I've started getting into uh, like filming and like specifically films and stuff by the uh, connections okay also apply that and then but i uh, am always creating because for me personally i prefer to create and i love like creating my own things uh, my own products and films and videos and stuff like that all just creating my own content and all that stuff because it's just something fun to do and when i've created it and finished it it's something i can look back to like i don't know in the next 40 years or something and just think that was fun to do back then and stuff like that and uh yeah and i also thought that seeing as lockdown is here and we're all stuck at home i might as well have something to do to uh, keep myself occupied as i said and that way it's like also a way of just showing like everyone else how i'm doing and things like that and yeah. Yeah, and also seeing as it's lockdown, most people are staying at home, which means more people will most likely be on a, a device with Wi-Fi access and stuff like that. So that way, it's an easier way to hopefully get some more traffic, if you will. Yeah. Um, one second, let me just sort something out. Sorry about that. Connection's not great on my end. Um, Where was I? Okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we were just discussing your road in your journey into YouTube. That's actually quite interesting. Um, now, connections split. There we go. We're back. Um, now, we go. one question I want to ask you that will lead us into the rest of the podcast, hopefully. Is what film films what films have you been watching lately? Oh, uh, what films have I been watching lately? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so recently, I uh, seventeen again. <laughs> I watched 1917 in a set, absolutely, not just because of the fact it's a World War I film. I enjoy World War films because I find them really interesting as a unique part um, of time and in history. But also just the way they filmed it, obviously, is an amazing yeah. uh, spectacle um, and phenomenon when it comes to uh, 1917. So thank you, Roger Deakins, director of photography for that film. Yes. Uh, and I have been recently uh, watching the uh, Marvel movies the MCU movies because I've got a lot of them on DVD because I love to collect DVDs. Nice. Um, call me old-fashioned if you will. Uh, <laughs> so I've just been wor working my way through those because I just love the Marvel movies. It's just amazing in my opinion. Um, and also particularly on Netflix I've just been working on more TV series on that Currently, I'm in the fourth season of Peaky Blinders by the BBC, so that's definitely interesting. And also just working my way through uh, sitcoms such as Friends, The Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother, you know, all the, fa all the all famous the, all that stuff. All the famous ones. Yes, I am one of those people. But yeah, I uh, enjoy those. So nice. definitely uh, watching those like, late in the evening. <laughs> just to relax. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to, I'd like to discuss um, Marvel, because obviously with Marvel, um, there's been, I mean, they've been, Marvel's been around for almost 11, for around 11, 12 years now. I think they're coming up on their 12th year. 
and um, and so they like that. Not only will they have um, loads of films already in their collection, they'll also have a massive fan base, and so any comment on that is going to be picked up very easily. And um, one thing I'd, I'd like to discuss with you is the controversial um, comment that Scorsese made when it comes to superhero movies. Because um, I was watching this, I um, was watching this thing on YouTube uh, called Hollywood Reporters Directors Roundtable. I don't know if you watch it, but and they have it's where they get different either directors or actors or writers, and they gather them all to discuss their styles, their way of going about things, discussing different topics and their films and creating. And one of the topics that was brought up was the comments Scorsese made on superhero films. And obviously he said that superhero films, for anyone that doesn't remember, he said that superhero films are not cinema and they are seen more as a theme park ride. And how, um, and what, was, what were your thoughts when you first saw that or heard it? Well, to be honest, this is actually the first time I've heard that. Um, <laughs> I think I missed that a bit from Scorsese. But yeah, so superhero films aren't cinema. They are more of a theme park ride. So when I first hear that, I think I can see what Scorsese's going on about because of how if we take a film uh, from it such as... I don't know, let's just say, yeah, let, let's say Captain Marvel. Uh, in Captain Marvel, you've got a lot of the action scenes, like when she, near the end of the film, when she starts flying around and all that stuff, and you're just flying in all that stuff. It can seem like one of those things, right? So like Thor Park, when you're like wearing a virtual reality headset or something, and you're, like, you're in the scene like, with them and all that stuff and you're experiencing it like it's there right in front of you mm -hmm. uh i can see how mark scorsese in my part of a director because scorsese obviously grew up with all of the technology um such as cgi and green screen and uh, 3d imaging and tracking and stuff like that all that we have now and he had to use less effects and stuff in is films mm -hmm. such as like Taxi Driver and Goodfellas um, so I can see how he would say that because to him the uh, era driver and all that stuff uh, that is like pure cinema if you will because yes. it's more it's more based on the actual storytelling and the acting because back then seeing as they didn't have like as much CGI uh, capabilities as we have now they had to focus more on telling the story uh through act pure cinema so that's acting and uh, being able to drive the narrative and storytelling and keep the audience focused on that on the plot of the narrative whereas nowadays most people are just blown away by all the like cgi special effects and all the amazing visuals and audio codes and all that stuff that are produced within film. So I where he's coming from, and I understand, uh, in my personal opinion, I would have to disagree with him. Huh. See, I I agree with Scorsese, because I, I see where he's coming from, because he's he, what I feel as though he's saying is that he's not saying that um, superhero films aren't films he's saying that they're not cinema in the respect that obviously yeah yes, yes you have those you have films that are there to tell a story and you, um which he believes which is what i feel as though he believes is true cinema and then you have films like the mcu where they've just sort of where it's sort of just a juggernaut um for, of um similar stories where you have um a hero um, who is introduced and then he goes on on a similar journey to most other superhero films yeah um and in that respect it kind of makes sense when he says it's not true cinema because with 
most cinema, you have films um, that are all very different in the story, in the structure, in the way it's told, um, in the styles of acting, It's and everything is different. Whereas with superhero films, the reason I'm kind of, because I myself, am, I, I can feel myself coming away from superhero films, because the love of, since I've started looking at films differently, um, I've seen, I've been looking at, um, at films like uh, the Marvel film, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and gone, yes, okay, that's all good, um, in the fact that they've got character arcs, they've got um, this, they've got story, and they've got all these amazing um, cinematic spectacles, but uh, and when it comes to CGI, but I, f I feel as though it's starting to get a little repetitive in the sense that the story is the stories are starting to kind of just merge in into one kind of structure as a whole and obviously that's not the case when it comes to their um some of the sequels when it comes to the superhero sequels and when it comes to like the avengers films where they all come together that's like that's something slightly different and that that I would have to disagree with Scorsese on because I do feel a bit more sense of I'm watching cinema because there's so much going on that it's slightly easier to get lost in the story mm. um, in a good sense, which um, which is where I'd have to disagree with with him, but. On the most part, I, I do agree with him. Now. Compelling um, argument. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, Endgame. I want to talk Endgame with you. Um, obviously, you've seen it recently. I, I mean, I, I was just I was watching it the other day um, with, my, with my brother who loves that stuff. But um, he... Um, I was watching it and I one one of the things I enjoyed was how um, how it starts off in the middle um, of either in the middle or towards or towards the end of Thanos's um, destruction of Asgard um, which links night which was linked and hinted to at in the post credit scene for Thor Ragnarok, and that was a nice kind of um, segue into Endgame. Um, and are you getting confused with Avengers Infinity? Because Avengers Infinity War, that one starts with Thanos on Thor at the end of that was in the end of Thor Ragnarok. Ah, I'm getting no, I'm getting confused. Yeah, Avengers Endgame <laughs> begins with uh, Clint Barton or Hawkeye with his uh, family doing yes, archery. That's correct. Yeah, that one. Yes. Okay, well, Infinity War. Let's discuss Infinity War first then. <laughs> Sorry about yeah, that. Infinity uh, War. Yeah. Yeah. So where um, And I like how they kind of segue into it. You don't see any of Thanos' destruction. You just see, um, yep, the, see the end of it. Yeah. Which is um, what I like with what the Russo brothers have done with Avengers because um, they've kind of taken all of the films um, that have that were already there and they've gone let's bring them together and introduce one of the biggest MCU villains that go across all of the heroes and and create something out of that and then what I like what they did was that they just throw you instead of um, throwing you into a build-up of action or action. Um, they've gone. That's sort straight, of the, straight into the, the, the end. Skip yeah. everything in the middle where they have the action, all the fighting, all the arguing, um, all the tactics. All They're going straight to the end, and then that's 
And I like what they did there because that's already growing your hatred as the viewer for Thanos. And I found that quite clever. Mm. And then how it all kind of, and then how it's then them going to, and then how it's nicely linked into the introduction of the Infinity Stones of what all of them do. Because obviously we've seen some of the Infinity Stones because we've seen the Power Stone in the Guardians film. And yeah. then we see the Reality Stone in the second Thor film. We yeah, see that was the reality. Uh, the Mind Stone, Mind uh, Stone was, was oh, in wrong. Age of Ultron. And um, the Power Stone, the blue one, is uh, from the Tesseract in Avengers Assemble. Yes, Space Stone is it? Yes. And then you don't see you don't see the soul, soul stone. And then there's the time stone from Yeah, uh, Doctor Doctor Strange. Strange. Um and how they then in um but for anyone that doesn't watch the entire MCU, they managed to recap on all the stones in that yeah. short period of time, whilst also explaining it to some of the characters. Because what they did well was um one writing thing that um, that I try and use is to try and tell the characters in the in the film in your in your story what you as the audience already know. Yeah. But um, but then also not giving away too much because obviously um, one thing with with Avengers with the Marvel even that I've noticed is that sorry if I'm blabbing on but. No, it's fine. Go they um, show you all the stones, and they show you the power of the stones mm. in different films. But not one Avenger that knows the power of all of the stones. That um, it, it's the um, it's Doctor Strange and the wizards of the MCU that know what can be done if all the stones are combined, but they don't necessarily know the powers of all the stones. And I find that clever how they've just gone, okay, this is what could happen. And they're telling you the end result. they're foreshadowing. And, but then it's sort of, that's them, that's them writing in the classic tactic, writing tactic with um, films and stories of, um, um, objective and obstacle, uh, intention and obstacle, where you have the intention, which is them trying to stop Thanos from getting all the stones, and then the obstacle is that is um, them having to travel across um, far and wide to hide the stones or destroy the stones or um, protect the stones, and um, I found that. I feel as though the Russo brothers did that quite well. And then obviously then there's the link into Endgame, which is when the entire intention of the entire of the entire story is just completely changed. Exactly. Just yeah. like just, just shift. flips viewers' perspective. Yeah. They hook you, they have you hooked from Infinity War for Endgame. Yeah. And there's exactly. that entire spectacle as well. Mm. What's your view on that? From a technical standpoint, anyway. <laughs> uh, well, I'm pretty sure you already covered everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, and just making it short and sweet, I basically agree with everything that you said. Uh, I, I must admit, I really love the all the action scenes in Marvel. I just love how they create it. However, um, when it, as you said in Infinity War at the beginning, they completely skipped the battle before um well before what we do see in the beginning and i really enjoyed that because i was expecting before i went in to see it for the first time in the cinema i expected us to see some action so i was actually kind of thrown off that expectation i don't know if that's the right phrase but we're gonna go with it um when then it turned out that all the action has been dealt and we're in all the main action. And now we're going straight into the very tense 
aftermath, if you will, of the said action. There is a bit when um, Hulk fights Thanos and all of that stuff. Um, but obviously we're talking about the main action here. So that was a very intriguing hook for me, to be honest, because I was completely like, all the expectations I had were honestly thrown out the window when that started, because now I'm like, okay, I have no idea what's about to happen, what's going to happen. So mm. then that, I think, really caught my eye in it and got me engaged. And that I really enjoy about the way the Russo brothers did Infinity War. And I believe that they also did that through to End Avengers Endgame. Hopefully yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Now let's, um, so we've talked about that as a whole. Let's discuss sections, small sections, the not the parts that aren't that aren't looked at as much. I feel when when it comes to discussing films, which is the one of the main points for this podcast. Um, so, um, what is first before we go in, into anything? What, what would you say your um, strong point is when it comes to um, creating a film? Where's your area of expertise, would you say? Or being so, in term, do you mean in terms of the actual creation of the film? Yes. So the actual creation of, of it, film production. The... So if it were, for example, um, say cinematography or directing or acting yeah. or camera work mm. or anything that's kind of like a specific area when it comes to creating film. The specific niche within the niche. Um, yes. I would say that, to be honest, acting, because I consider myself to be an actor who just happens to have like knowledge and the ability to do other things, um, I prefer to be the actor in the situation. Yes. Um, so my strong point for me is the acting side of the creation of a film okay so let's discuss the acting then of the film um uh one thing we should we can discuss then is um comedy acting and comic relief in films yeah. and then game there's plenty of that from yeah, plenty of humor a lot of them especially in the guardians seg um, segment at the beginning um Have you acted? So, um, have you played around with comedy before in past? Um, when it comes to the acting side of things, in my in the past, not necessarily with filmmaking. However, in like education, uh, in like college yes. and things yeah. like that, I have I have done uh, comedy uh, pieces. I did. Um, in a college, a uh, show called One Man, Two Governors. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure most the uh, fans will know that one. Uh, so I, that's a very comedic show. So I did some comedy in that. Um, but that, to be honest, now that I think about it, is like the extent of my work with uh, humor in terms of creative arts. Hmm. Well, then, this will be a great learning experience for both of us because, I mean, I've played around in some comedy, but like, I haven't gone um, and dived, dived, dived into it in, in full depth because I've yeah. done more dramatic stuff, more serious stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But so this will be a great learning experience. Um, and for anyone listening who is an actor who is also learning. Now, Comic Relief when it comes to especially when it, i feel when it comes to cinematic pieces cin not cin not the cinematic but like superhero stuff or anything that is dark you need to have some comic relief because other otherwise if, if a piece is too dark i feel then it's then as a viewer or a or a listener there's not there's not less there's not really a sense you don't get a full feel for the character. You don't have a full idea 
of the characters. And so that's why I feel comic relief for especially when acting has a major part when, when it comes to creating a character. Yeah, you mean showing off their characteristics and yes. like showing you who they who they are on like other areas of their yes. of them, not just yes. showing more than one side of them. Yes, exactly. Exactly that. Um now Comic relief in Marvel is quite prominent, especially more recently when it comes because obviously there's Guardians, which is quite a comedic film. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously there's Chris Pratt, who is known for his sitcoms in America. Yeah. Um, and then you have um, Dave Batista, who's done a lot of comedy lately. Um, he's done My Spy, which is his most recent film, which I saw and was very funny. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch that at some point. I've got yeah. it on Prime, I think. Yeah. Um, and then there's... Um, who else is there? There was... I mean, there's Karen Gillan, um, who's who's done quite a bit of comedy lately with Jumanji, and then she's done some... And she yeah. was um, quite the comic relief in Doctor Who. Yeah, she was. Um, she was. She's really great when it comes to uh, comedy pieces. Yes, yes, very, very funny. Especially in, um, I mean that seg that segment in Jumanji when she's got to kind of, when she's trying to fool the guards in that. Um, yeah, that that, 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 was, that was that's comedy gold. <laughs> that that is like, if you can figure out that that was funny, you don't know what comedy is. Yeah, because that was. A terrific scene. So oh, I took my hat off to Karen Gillan for doing that. Yes, yeah. that must have been a little bit embarrassing on set. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, as an actor, if you got to, you got to. Go, have to go full out. If you do, if you do it, if you feel, if you feel as though you're doing it wrong, you're doing it right. You're mm. doing something right, which is no. Uh, what, yeah. What's the saying? Um, I know it's, I know old. I know a saying. Um, that like what I just said, I can't really seem to remember at the moment, at this moment in time, it'll probably it'll come to me, but it's something like, if you feel silly doing it, you're doing it right. I feel as I've just said that, but, and, that, and she that's, showed that, she showed it. Yeah. So she showed it. And then, I mean, yeah. but Guardians, the, the writing in it is amazing. The writing's amazing. The, um, and then, the way the actors have done it, especially when you have characters like um, Groot and Rocket Raccoon, mm. um, it's harder for them to show emotion because it's an because it's an animal um, or a creature that's not so humanoid, where we can do so much with our facial muscles. Muscles, whereas with like Groot being a um, um, piece of wood basically um yeah. the fact that it's all done through his um through the the actor's voice i find intriguing to see how it's done and i feel as though we've gone off on a rant oh well <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah it's i mean i comedy comedy's sort of a for me, a tough one to, and I feel actually for most people, it's a hard one to get right because it's all about timing and everything, which is, and, t and timing and comedy, timing is everything. Because, absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you get the timing ever so slightly wrong, the effect for an entire line, you could lose what you, what you had built up. And that, but then that feeling when you get it right as an actor is just amazing. It is exhilarating. Yeah. Um, now, let's let's discuss YouTube for a bit. Um, so we've spoken about why you wanted to get into YouTube. Um, first, where can people find you? on youtube uh so obviously the main 
one when it comes to uh, YouTube is just searching up the uh, channel. So it's just my name, Matt Sale, both um, first letters of the um, the first letters of the words are capital. So that makes sense. Uh, just wanted to name Link it. in the description, by the way, for anyone that's curious. Go, go. Yes, check thank you. Please, uh, <laughs> please. Please click on that link and uh, see what I'm about and while you're at it, just uh, subscribe. I feel like I'm doing a, uh, I feel like I'm doing a YouTube video already. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you're, uh, if they are following me on Instagram, I uh, put a uh, link up to the video every time I upload one. Uh, yeah. I'm currently in the uh, works of figuring out other ways of, um, like, Oh, uh, what's the word? Like advertising it. I guess that's a good way of um, yes. putting it. Uh, so I might do a post on my channel. I mean, my uh, Instagram page for every time I upload a video and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just figuring that out. And uh, yeah, so those are the main two ways uh, you can uh, uh, find it because I uh, post uh, I post on Instagram quite often uh, here and there with uh, uh, like stuff that I'm doing. Sometimes I might uh, put up a uh, picture of uh, me um, like posing for a picture and stuff like that. And now then I might put the link to it in the uh, like description of that Instagram post. I might do that uh, later in the future. And uh, yeah, so just um, also just searching up my uh, YouTube channel as well. I'll go uh, and figuring Instagram, out. That'll also be in the description if he doesn't mind. It might not be. I don't know. Do you mind? Oh, uh, what was that? Um, Instagram. Description? Uh, yes. Yes. No. yes. Oh, also, that reminds me. Also, yes. I do, um, oh, what's the word? Advertiser on my uh, Facebook page. Facebook page? Just my Facebook profile. <laughs> Facebook? As well. Once again, hopefully, link in the description. I'll send you a uh, link to my Facebook when, when this uh, yep. podcast Absolutely. is finished. Yeah, so that's, um, uh, yeah, so those are the uh, three main ways uh, you can uh, find my uh, YouTube channel as well. I don't also, have also, a. Uh, don't sorry. Subscribe to this channel <laughs> if you enjoy. If you're enjoying the podcasts, I mean, I know this is only episode two, but if you're enjoying them, subscribe, I'm going, share I'm the video. I'm definitely going to. Uh, I'm definitely going to subscribe to this one and uh, yeah. uh, share it every time a new episode comes out. So definitely uh, send me much. a link and I'll subscribe. I shall, to I, I shall show yours in return for your kindness. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, marketing. Obviously, being startup channels, marketing at first is going to be very hard. And um, from what I found out, people, everyone tackles it slightly differently. How do you go about marketing yourself then to people that don't know you? How do you market so, yourself? Shall I start off with in terms of YouTube or? Um, Let's go YouTube for now, seeing yeah. we're on that topic. So, in terms of uh, marketing myself, I like to... Obviously, I'm a startup channel, so not everything's, like, as high quality as everyone else, as, like, everyone wishes it. Like, to be honest, I wish I had the greatest gear and all that stuff, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, but uh, mainly what I do is I uh, just try and, um, like, try and market myself because... I should have mentioned this earlier, but another reason why I'm uh, why I started YouTube was because that way it's a second pro, it's like a second portfolio of myself. Uh, because mm -hmm. being an actor, my my end, my like life ambition is to become a professional actor in films, um, and obviously that is no easy task. Um, or yeah. easy soul because it is very difficult. I think um, if you take a look at the majority of actors uh, today in an area such as Hollywood, I think only 20% of all recorded actors and actresses are actually in work acting wise. So obviously it's a very competitive um, area. So you've got to like do everything you can to promote yourself um, as an actor and also who you are as a person as an individual yeah so i use youtube i'm going to use youtube to uh publish all of my uh films i create all of my like anything that i create that i'm acting in i'm going to post up on youtube so then that way i have got a uh, like 
collection of everything that I've been in. And that way, that's sort of like my video showreel in a way mm. in, on a more like wider scale, um, mm. uh, things like that. Yeah. And also in, uh, and another part of my YouTube channel is probably going to end up being vlogs here and there just to show like what I'm doing. Cause you know, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and things like that, using the cameras and all that stuff just to also show who I am. Uh, because yeah. one of my old college teachers, I was talking to him about this and he said that from the, uh, experience that he's had teaching me, uh, he's my performing arts teacher. So he had to work with me on my acting skills and stuff like that he said that he found that in his words i'm a very quirky guy and he said that <laughs> uh yeah and he said that i need i should dwell on that and like sort of express that more because that way yeah. i'm promoting myself as an individual showing who i am and that way i'm an approachable and most importantly workable guy like i'm very yeah. easy to work with and things like that and i'm not going to like basically be an a-hole <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah so those are the main uh reasons why um how i market myself because obviously you got to uh, market yourself in a good way if you want to use youtube for good things such yes. as what i just said yeah hmm interesting <laughs> very interesting um <laughs> now what else? What else could we talk about when it comes to YouTube? Collaborate. Can we see any collaborations with, in the future with other channels? Maybe. Well, I um, I don't really have many, um, to be honest, friends who, who I know personally who have YouTube channels. I do know people who I have met people who have, but I don't really talk to them much. Um, and mm. we mainly focus on different niches and things like that yeah. these are for different reasons however i yeah. don't see why that can't um like help out or anything but if i do um, meet anyone who has a youtube channel and are interested in doing something with me um i'm definitely going to uh be uh doing that and also i'll just collaborate with just friends as well bring in yeah. my friends um on the um channel and all that stuff so then that way they get a glimpse of the stuff that I do and also so then we can all have some fun and things like that and it'll just yeah. be a laugh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um well I think that I think that, that that's good this is a good pl place to wrap it up. Thank you very much Matt for thank you for having coming me coming on today. Um this video is coming out the same time as last week's episode obviously you know that because it's out but not at this moment in time anyway um and it's, um, another episode coming out same time next week and it's good that's just going to be the same up until after lockdown by which point there may be a slight gap um where i just try to short sort out a schedule so i can have because my aim is to have a lot as anyone that listened to last week's episode is to have a live uh, recording studio where we record in person and so that's going to have to be completely rescheduled redone so there'll be mm -hmm. there's going to be a gap but i hope you enjoyed um subscribe share all my social links are going to be in the description and then matt's will be in there as well linked to his facebook his instagram and his youtube and then my links are for my Instagram, the podcast's Instagram, my Twitter. I don't actually know how to get that on. I will put the tag in. <laughs> um, and I will. And then obviously there's this YouTube channel um, where I will be posting films. I already have one film. There'll be a link to that in the description. And then my website portfolio. If you have what, if you have one, Matt, feel free to send it to me. And that may also be in there. I don't know if he has one though, <laughs> but um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah. And I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine. And see you in the next okay. one. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Yeah, thank you.